In this video, I'm going to show you how to find internal consistency reliability using JASP. In order to do this, we're going to need to do an add-in. You notice here that there's these various options that come standard in JASP, these drop-downs. If you go over to the right on this blue plus and click on that blue plus, it gives you some other things you can add in. We're going to check on reliability and add that in. That allows us to find reliabilities of various types. So um, if you want to follow along, this data set is available to you in the show notes. You just get, you can click on it and download it and follow along to what I do here. It's fictional data, so I probably won't get great reliability. So let's go ahead and click on it. You'll see that it has these various options that come up. We're just going to deal with this first option in this video, unidimensional reliability. If we click on that, um, the window pops open. You'll see that we have our variables over here. These first 20 items represent a fictional set of Likert types um, items. I'm going to pop them over here into the variables window. You can pop them over together one at a time. doesn't really matter. Okay, and one thing that you'll notice is, is you need to have the right type of data for it to work. In this window down here, it shows these two symbols. The, the symbol on the right, the ruler, means scale data our interval ratio, and this um, with a bar chart there means ordinal data. And so with either ordinal or interval data, this will, I mean, or interval ratio data, this will work. If your data is classified wrong is the wrong type of data, you can fix that by going over to the data, clicking on these options here and changing it to the correct type. Otherwise, it won't let you pop it over there. So that's one little hint that you need to be aware of. Now, by default, it gave me, um, it gives me McDonald's Omega. This um, has the estimate of reliability. If I pop down analysis, you'll see the various options here. The most commonly used measure for internal consistency reliability is Chromebox Alpha, and you'll see that that's an option down here. So if I click on that, I also get Chromebox off. Of course, it's quite poor here, and this is just fictional data, and that's probably why. Um, but Chromebox Alpha has a lot of disadvantages, and that's why McDonald's Omega here is used as the default. Essentially, um, Chromebox Alpha assumes something called tau equivalence, which means that these items that I've included, these 20 items, all measure um, the item, you know, the overall latent trait equivalently. They're all equivalent in quality. Essentially, it means if I were to perform a con uh, confirmatory factor analysis with these items, the loadings would all be equal, and that's usually not the case. While um, McDonald's Omega does not assume that, and so, so it's often considered a better estimate, even though less commonly used. And you can see that I have both of those options given to me here. I can um, select it for it to show both of those or just one of those. If I want, I can show a confidence interval around those values, or I can deselect that and not include it here. It's also important to know that some, if you have reverse meaning items, meaning for one, for some of the items, um, if you have a large amount of the trait, you would answer maybe strongly disagree instead of strongly agree, that you need to tell it which ones are reverse scale. And you can do that by coming down to this next spot here, clicking on the ones that are reverse in meanings, and popping them over there. Okay, and again, this is just fictional data. So if, for example, you had a scale that was measuring self-esteem, and most of the items were worded something like, I really like myself, um, but you had a few that said, you know, I feel like I'm a failure type items, those would be reverse meaning items, and they would need to be put over here in order for these estimates to be accurate. So that's um, an option here or a drop-down that you need to be aware of that can be helpful to you. You can also get a variety of other information um, at the same time. For example, I can get the average inter-item correlation if I want that. I can get the mean, okay, of either the participant sum scores or their mean scores, whichever is, um, you wish to use, okay. So I can get that added into the table as well as, of course, the standard deviation of those scores. So I can get that as well. 
and that is for the overall scale. Now there's also these individual item statistics you can get at the same time which are really helpful. You can get, for example, the mean and the standard deviation for all your items. So you don't have to go separately find descriptive statistics for each item. You can get it right here within this same module. Okay, you can get the mean and standard deviation. You can also get the um, correlation of that item to the total of all other items except itself. Um, and that's right here, so you can get that. You can see I've got a couple that it's even negative, you know. Um, this is, again, fictional data, so it doesn't work real well. So you can get that particular information added here. And you can get these other statistics as well for either McDonald's Omega or Chromex Alpha. You can get what the reliability would be if that item were dropped. Let's look at it for Chromex Alpha. And so what we find here is if you notice the Chromex Alpha is 0 0.210. However, if I were to drop, for example, item 10, it would actually go up to 0 0.267. So this is useful maybe in here if I drop 19, it'll go up to 283. Just look at one of those at a time. I wouldn't drop two items based on the on um, looking at this once you just drop one item see how this changes and then drop another that can be useful if you want to shorten the, um, the scale or if you want to um, because it's longer than will work in your for your purposes or if you um, worry that there's certain problematic items that are bringing down the reliability that you may want to consider removing so that's something to be aware of here. There are some more advanced options down here, and I'm not going to go into those because they're very rarely used. If you want to get uh, more deep into it, for example, you can. there's options here for Chromebacks Alpha. There's various options for McDonald's Omega. Um, the, the missing values in this particular case excludes cases pairwise instead of listwise. I don't have missing data, so it won't affect it and so forth. And I can also um, do a variety of other things here, but those things are things that are that are rarely done. And also be aware that there's this information um, button, blue button for procedures where you can look at it and, and um, learn a little bit more about the procedure as was found here in JASP.